Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And today we're very pleased to have our HR Director with us, Mike Collard. Mike, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, some of you perhaps have seen Mike before. He certainly has done this program, but it's been a little while. Mike, why don't you begin by sharing a little bit about yourself and when you started as Human Resources Director for Sheboygan County. Well, I came to Sheboygan County in December 2002, so it's been over five years now. Got my five-year pin last night at the county board meeting. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, happy to be still doing uh, some interesting work at Sheboygan County Human Resources. Well, Mike, you've made good things happen in, during your tenure, no question about that. And we're going to talk about some of that. But one of the real exciting initiatives that you shared with the county board last night was our in-health clinic that's going to be kicking off. Please talk about that a little bit. I'd love to. I could talk all day about this uh, in-health clinic because it's a very exciting project that I think is going to do great things for Sheboygan County as an organization, great things for our employees, and great things for the community as a whole, we hope. Uh, just to uh, give a little bit of an overview, uh, what we're doing is we've contracted with an outside firm called Intera Health, and they're going to be opening a, a dedicated clinic uh, solely to serve the uh, employees of Sheboygan County and any partners that may come in with Sheboygan County on this project in the future, and we're definitely talking to some other partners and looking to do that. But it would be a medical clinic staffed by a nurse practitioner. Uh, the nurse has been hired by Intera, and she's an extremely well-qualified person. Karen Bonner is her name. And as an advanced practice nurse practitioner, uh, she's able to do really quite a bit of the basic health care that people need on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, everything from you know, treating basic illnesses, doing physical exams, uh, you know, cuts and bruises, earaches, infections, a lot of minor procedures, uh, on up to some almost mid-level procedures. Uh, it's estimated by experts in the field that a uh, advanced practice nurse practitioner can do 70 to 90 percent, perhaps, although that may be a little on the high side, of what a family care physician can do. So a lot of those routine health care needs can be taken care of by a nurse practitioner. But we think the nurse practitioner adds something to the mix because, frankly, she'll have a lot more time to spend, a lot more personalized attention, and a lot more emphasis on the overall wellness and health needs of the individual as a whole. Outstanding. Uh, where, where's the uh, in-health clinic going to be located? It's going to be within a block of our law enforcement center, within short walking distance of a lot of county employees. Obviously, we have some facilities out to different locations. But it's going to be in the uh, Prairie States building at the corner of 6th and Pennsylvania. And that's also very fortuitous because Prairie States, of course, is the company that manages our health care claims. So they're just becoming our landlord or the landlord for this clinic project as well. Now, of course, we have a lot of fine medical offices throughout Sheboygan County. Why should Sheboygan County go, employees go to our in-health clinic? Well, there, there are several reasons. Uh, the most immediate reason for an employee is that there will be a cost savings. Under our health plan, an employee who needs to go to the doctor for some routine treatment or some relatively minor, whether it's minor or major treatment, normally has to pay first a deductible, uh, $250 per person uh, or $500 per family, uh, and that's met once during the year. But even after that amount has been paid by the employee, uh, a copay is required of usually 10% of the remaining charges after the deductible is met. With the arrangement we have for this nurse practitioner clinic, we're able to offer this to employees without any copay, without any deductible. So that's the immediate incentive built in for employees. The longer term incentive, and I think what should be uh, almost a greater incentive, is that we're able to provide a very good option for health care that might not be available to them otherwise. As part of this clinic, uh, the nurse will be uh, able to access all an employee's medical records, will be able to work with whatever the employee's other doctors or health care providers would be, and really pay a lot more attention to the whole picture. A lot of focus on employee wellness, on prevention of disease, prevention of those chronic conditions that both very much harm people's lives and, frankly, add quite a bit of dollars to our uh, county budget. If we, can, if we can avoid some of those bad situations through better prevention, better managed care at an early stage, better identification of health risks, uh, both employees in the county come out way ahead. 
And nice segue to the next question. You made it clear that it's beneficial for the employees, that they can save money in, as individuals or families. It's certainly good for their health and well-being, but what about the county as an organization? Why is it beneficial to Sheboygan County and Sheboygan County taxpayers? Well, again, we think there are short-term financial benefits as well as long-term. The short-term benefits come just from the cost of the visit. Uh, we looked at our health claims for the past year recently and found that the average cost of a physician visit, whatever that may be, was $121. Nothing unusual about that, but with this clinic, we have an agreed fee schedule per visit so that depending on the level of care, it would be either $45 or $70 at most just for the office visit. So right off the bat, we're saving usually at least $50 uh, on the office visit that is a savings that can be split partly goes to the employee but in the form of not having to pay the co-pays and deductibles but the rest of it comes back to the county. Now the county then is taking most of that money and using it to pay for a total wellness package and the health coaching services that are also going to be free to employees and employees dependents who are members of our health plan uh, and uh, we think that investment we're taking that savings and kind of reinvesting it in employee health and uh, will produce probably a little bit of short-term financial savings for the county. Uh, but as a result of that investment, much longer-term savings through better awareness of the health risks and keeping people out of those high cost uh, and poor health categories. I had the opportunity, as you know, to tour the facility with you the other day and was very impressed with the, with the location that employees can simply walk over to the clinic mm -hmm. from work. Uh, however, there was additional space that uh, I know is part mm -hmm. of our lease arrangement, but we won't yet be fully using. What was the thinking there? Well, part of it is that's the space they had available, but that really worked out very well for our plans because what we'd really like to see happen with this clinic is to see it grow and expand. Right now we're opening on June 2nd, less than two weeks from today, uh, with just one person working at the clinic, that nurse practitioner, Karen Bonner, uh, who will be a one-person one shop at first to have to do anything from scheduling appointments to doing the health coaching, which she's very well qualified to do, to doing the, the treatment and prescribing of medications, for instance, that comes with it. But uh, as the demand grows, both from our employees and then hopefully from other employers which will uh, be able to join up with us and uh, participate in this arrangement. Uh, we very much hope to expand in the near future to add you know, another nurse, maybe a separate health coach, maybe another nurse practitioner, an office manager. If, if things go well, as we very much hope they do, uh, we hope to be able to add you know, perhaps a physical therapy or a chiropractic capability and, and maybe even an x-ray machine at some point down the road. So there's a beautiful space, as you mentioned, uh, at the Prairie States building that's really just the right size for our dream clinic uh, when we're at full expansion capability. But either way we go, it's, it's going to be high quality, professional looking office space. Uh, so we hope that employees and, and people visiting the clinic have a high degree of confidence that they are getting the very best of medical care there. Final question before I turn it over to Mike. I, I know you have mm -hmm. been really working hard and taking a the predominant lead role in getting this pulled together and implemented. Your staff have been fantastic and in fact you and your staff have been making presentations to employees throughout Sheboygan County, you know, sharing with them the, the opportunity, how it's going to work, the savings for both the employees and the county. What kind of response are you getting so far from employees? Overwhelmingly positive. As you mentioned, uh, Ruth Wilsing of our HR department staff has done an outstanding job going out and doing employee presentations. Uh, we've had meetings with different groups of employees. Uh, Jay Scott, who's our uh, insurance consultant and advisor, has been participating in those, at least some of them, and Terra Health people have been participating in them. And the word is really getting around the employees. We think that uh, when the clinic opens June 2nd, there's going to be a, a line around the block to get in because uh, people are excited about this for nothing but favorable comments. Uh, so people are getting excited. Very glad, glad to see that. Outstanding. Thank you, Mike. Mike, I've heard mm -hmm. that a lot of companies are offering uh, their employees wellness programs. How will this uh, affect that and what will we be doing in that area? Well, our, our wellness program as a whole uh, will really take a tremendous boost from the operation of this clinic, from the opening of it. Uh, two years ago, we really didn't have anything in the area of employee wellness. We weren't doing anything. Uh, we were looking to do something, and in fact, the idea for the clinic came about 
when I got together with, with people from the city of Sheboygan and the school district uh, in Sheboygan, really to talk about wellness programs and trying to look for some sort of joint program to work on. Uh, the clinic actually grew out of that as a way to pay for a really good wellness program because they can be very expensive. Uh, so we're just about on the cusp of really getting that kind of wellness program up and running. But we didn't wait for the clinic either. Uh, about a year ago, you know, Adam, our county administrator, came to me and said, we really need to get something started on wellness. We had no budget at that point, but we started anyway. We formed a wellness committee, which has uh, been a tremendously enthusiastic group of employees that come uh, as volunteers. <clears throat> and I haven't been leading that committee, frankly. They've been leading me because they have a lot of great ideas. Uh, I told them at the start of the process, I have no budget to give you, but you know, be creative. Do some interesting things, and they've absolutely done that. We've had a number of programs. We've had, they've, a, they've found some volunteer speakers to come in without payment and, and give talks on things such as stress management or you know, stress over the holidays, or you know, we've had an event having to do with uh, breast cancer awareness and uh, a number of other things. In fact, just today, they're participating in the you know, Healthy Sheboygan 2008 program. A little bit of competition you know, with some of the other employers to see how many employees will sign up and do at least 20 minutes of exercise. And we had a very nice little lunch uh, for people who were involved in that program. A healthy, healthy lunch, healthy food. And the wellness program, I think, is doing better because of the way we started it. Because we really have the buy-in from employees will now be able to build on that with all the resources that will be available to us with the clinic. But an almost unanticipated side effect is I think it's really bringing employees from different departments together, and really improving morale among county employees. And you know, some people look down on morale, but it's good to see that kind of enthusiasm that people have for the workplace. That, uh, that's really good to hear. Um, as far as the county, what other impacts do you think that will have on you know, our health care costs and, and some of those areas? Well. Something on the order of 80% of healthcare claims come from 20% of the uh, population, 20% of our employees and their dependents. So if our wellness programs uh, have the effect of keeping just a few people, even one person every year, out of that high cost group, out of that chronic illness or catastrophic illness group, that'll, that one person may save the county $100,000 a year if we can do that once every year. So if we can do that with just improve the help, health of a large number of people a little bit, and maybe catch a few serious things before they become those very dangerous things, there's going to be some real benefits that we'll never necessarily know about, but we'll be there just the same. Mike, as you know, wages and benefits are the biggest uh, part of our county's budget. How much does it cost for us to provide the health insurance coverage for county employees? Well, it's about $12 million a year for the, for the county budget overall. So. Considering that the county tax levy is, I'm sure Adam can tell you, something like 45 million to 50 million, that's a significant percentage of the, of the tax levy if you look at it that way. So it's extremely important that we're good stewards and manage that program. What uh, type of things are we doing to keep the cost uh, at a reasonable level for our taxpayers mm -hmm. to cover this health insurance for our employees? Mm -hmm. Well, the things we're doing now, such as the clinic and the wellness program, are really kind of a second or third stage to our plan to keep those costs a little bit under control. Uh, to start out with, we had to have uh, more of a buy-in from employees because you know, they weren't paying for health insurance five, six years ago, except in a very small amount. But now through negotiations and changes to our plan, all employees are contributing 10% toward the premium. So that's contributed to the fact that employees are a little more motivated to, to be good consumers of health care. We've also had several changes to our health plan. We've uh, changed our network. Uh, so that we have a much broader network uh, that provides us better discounts from healthcare providers uh, on a more consistent across the board basis and that saved us quite a bit of money. And then effective the first of this year we also had some other significant changes to our plan design. Some of the technical things but again really designed to uh, encourage people to uh, spend their dollars wisely or spend our dollars wisely because they're spending their dollars as well. And As a result we've had very good success in the last couple of years in keeping the premium rates uh, down to a very low level of increase. Uh, a year ago our, our premium increase was 4.6 percent, which is a lot but much less than it had been. We had six years consecutive with double-digit uh, increases in our health insurance cost. 
Then they went down to 4.6 two years ago, 2.5% a year ago, and we're just starting to look at our numbers for 2009, what our premiums might be, and we're very optimistic that we'll be able to keep that rate very low again. Mike, as the HR director, you take the lead in negotiation of our union contracts. Mm -hmm. What's the current status of those contracts? Well, I've had a year off, as they say, but uh, I found a few other things to do. But uh, we settled all our contracts with eight bargaining units a year ago and uh, are now just, again, on the verge of reopening contracts with all eight bargaining units uh, because our contracts all expire at the end of this year, at the end of 2008. So it obviously uh, takes uh, usually quite some time to renegotiate, so we'll be starting this summer. And what do we do if we're not able to reach new agreements with them by the end of the year? How do we handle that? I think public sector bargaining is quite a bit different, uh, and people need to realize that, uh, from uh, the private sector when it comes to union relations and negotiations. We have a completely different statute that applies to us. Uh, we negotiate with each bargaining group, and, and they send their representatives, we have our representatives, and we really try very hard to come to an agreement. And we both understand that if we can't reach an agreement, the state more or less takes control. The uh, state will send a mediator to try to help us work out an agreement, but if we just can't come to an agreement, essentially both sides, the county as the employer and the union as a representative of the employees submit their last and best offer, and then a state appointed arbitrator comes in. And at that point, we lose control of the situation, and the state appointed arbitrator says either the county's offer is better or the union's offer is better and has no authority to compromise. It has to pick one offer or the other. So it's really kind of a poker game as to what position you're going to stake out, kind of a high-risk poker game, frankly, because hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars can be involved in the difference between the offers long term. But if it comes to that point, the state does uh, have its arbitrator make the final decision, and then the county board, unfortunately, uh, loses all say in the matter. Can't, uh, can't reverse that. Thanks, Mike. Do you have any other questions, Adam? Well, I, I wanted to go back to the wellness program and the, some of the activities that have been in play that Mike touched on. Uh, it's just been heartwarming to see the enthusiasm being generated by Mike's office and, and really throughout Sheboygan County today at the, at the luncheon that he mentioned a few minutes ago. Folks were walking outside, and I noticed a couple of the people that put it together, including... Uh, um, Ruth Wilson from your office and Denise and, and Nyla. Nyla Bourne and, mm -hmm. and a number of other good people but those three in particular and they were looking outside and oh I've never seen that person out there going for a walk before mm -hmm. and look at that crew going by with our non-motorized program there's been more interest in getting out on bikes I know Mike personally has taken the long bike ride from Plymouth mm -hmm. and it, it's it's just rather remarkable to see some of the momentum that is being generated, I think in part between the non-motorized program and our wellness program and seeing people getting out and walking and biking more and, and thinking about their eating habits. And now with the in-health mm -hmm. clinic, it, it's just, as you said, it, it's nice to see. And I do think that our workforce as a whole is, is getting involved. I mm -hmm. mean, folks are stepping up and getting involved with it. And it's a real credit to our I think our organization as a whole. The employee newsletter that we recently started, as you know, is a part of that as well. We've had very good feedback and comments that say this is the first time we really feel like we belong to a larger organization than just my department. So things really are coming together. I think kind of we're seeing a culture change in, in county employment. I think so. And last night at County Boyd, County Board, I'm Mike Vandersteen, of course, uh, you run the show there, and we had the opportunity to present some pins to folks for their years of service, including Mike Collard. And, Folks like Sheriff Helmke for, what, 30 years at the Sheriff's Department. And as we presented that, as we jointly went through that, I thought, you know, the secret's getting out. I think people in this community are starting to take notice that Sheboygan County has got some good things going. And we've got some good things going because we have great people throughout our organization whether it's Mike Helmke, Sheriff Helmke, our HR director, a number of folks were identified last night also for their leadership. Also Administrator Adam Well, well we've, got some, <laughs> we've got a good team in place, and from a standpoint of taking notice, that kind of leads into my next question. The city of Sheboygan right now has initiated a discussion with us mm -hmm. to look at perhaps combining HR functions, and I know you've had mm -hmm. some preliminary discussions 
uh, with some representatives of, of the city. Where is that at, Mike, and, and what are your thoughts on the potential for some shared services or win-win opportunity where the city and county could work more together providing HR functions? Mm -hmm. Well, it is at a very preliminary stage right now. Uh, but I do think that uh, the county HR committee, as well as the other county leaders uh, that I've talked to, have an open mind about it. And, and we're certainly prepared to, to look at, at the possibility of doing something together with the city and HR. Uh, we're talking first, at all about, first of all about combining HR departments. Uh, and I'm open-minded to that, certainly something we need to discuss further. Uh, the issues relating to that often involve, are, are difficult because uh, human resources often is so tightly intertwined with the general management. So there are often issues about who controls what direction you're going and, and, and it can be very challenging to do that, not impossible. So we're certainly going to discuss it further. There are some other possibilities as well that, that deserve further examination such as just uh, sharing or contracting to provide certain services to the city, certain parts of the HR function in return for you know, a contractual payment and that will allow us to add some staff perhaps. And a lot of ideas are floating around out there, uh, but we uh, are planning to have a uh, joint meeting again of the city uh, salary and grievance committee with the uh, County Human Resources Committee tentatively scheduled for June 5th, and we hope to firm that up tonight when I meet with the HR committee. So from a timetable standpoint, these two committees will continue to discuss the opportunities, and then ultimately, if something is accomplished or they come to terms on mm -hmm. a sharing a position or sharing some resources, what's the next step? How does that, that actually come to fruition? Well, both governing bodies would have to take some action to put that into effect uh, to you know, adjust the staffing of each uh, organization's department and to uh, presumably enter into some sort of a multi-year contract you know, to, to jointly operate whatever services are agreed upon. So there would be some public action, of course, uh, between the county board and the city council as well. Very good. Switching gears just a little bit. Um, for our viewers who have, have had the opportunity now to hear our HR director talk about some of the things going on in the, in the county, uh, we have about a thousand employees uh, throughout Sheboygan County, whether it's the Sheriff's Department or Highway Department or working in the courthouse or administration building. And we may have some folks out there wondering, well, how do I apply for a job? Uh, sure. what, is, what is the process right now? Folks are interested in seeing if there's any openings in Sheboygan County. Absolutely. It's a question we often get asked, so I always like to be sure we, we touch on this, uh, even though we've talked about some other subjects today. Uh, we do hire from time to time. The nursing home is a big area. The sheriff's department is often hiring for uh, correctional officers, for instance. Those are our two biggest areas. But a lot of different job classes are covered. Social workers, the highway department workers, and everything in between. Uh, but the thing people should know is that all county openings are listed at the Sheboygan Job Center and on the uh, state job net. That's uh, the website associated with that. So that's the easiest place to find them is to go to the job center. It's at uh, 3620 Wilgus Avenue here in Sheboygan. You can go there in person. You can check them out on the web. You can call them at 208-5810 uh, and uh, see what they have listed and uh, they, can, they can show you what the listings are and, and how to apply, give you the application forms you need. So 208-5810. 5810, very good. So that's how they can get more information. And of mm -hmm. course, your office is staffed by some outstanding individuals, Penny Elsner, who's your right-hand person. I don't know if mm -hmm. she's the assistant HR mm -hmm. director or not, but she essentially fills that role. Ruth Wilson mm -hmm. and then Courtney... Courtney Ames. Courtney Ames, one of the, the newest members. That's our newest of, member of the department. Uh, you've just got mm -hmm. some outstanding people. If folks have a question in general mm -hmm. about, well, how do I proceed, or what's happening with this in-health clinic? Do you have a general number that people can contact for more information? Absolutely, uh, and our staff would be glad to help anyone who has questions about county employment or about particular jobs. Uh, it's four five nine three five. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm You're not the first to what department. My telephone the, number is. <laughs> you for, never, you what, never have to call your own main line. That's what's, it. What's your number? <laughs> Mine's three one three one four two. No, the three one o. Yours is three one o three, isn't it? Three one o five. Yours is three one o three. Okay. Four five nine three one zero five for the county HR department. So it's either three one zero three three one zero five or <laughs> minus four five nine three one four two. If you have any questions for myself or mm -hmm. want to give the chairman or I some 
some uh, suggestions. And if you want to contact the HR director or his department, it is? 459-3105. 3105. Outstanding. That's what happens when you ask a question that isn't on our, on our list. <laughs> we only have a minute or two left, Mike. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you wanted to touch on or share with our viewers? Well, I'm trying to think what we haven't covered, but uh, there are a lot of things happening in the Human Resources Department. Uh, important thing for us to remember is that we're here to help out all the other county departments. So I'm a, I'm a public servant. I get paid through public dollars. Uh, and uh, I realize very much that my role is to help all the other county departments. And so that's why I may be not in the public eye as much as some of your other department heads that you've had on the program. You know, the Health and Human Services, the Highway Department, the Sheriff's Department, all the courthouse departments, they serve the public. And uh, we like to keep in mind that we're doing our part and just helping them continue doing the job. They all do so well. Very good. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Yes. Covered a lot of ground, excellent information. I'm sure folks can sense his enthusiasm for this new in-health clinic because it's something Mark and his team, mm -hmm. have, Mike and his team have been working on now for some time, and it is an exciting new initiative that I think we're only one of two counties out of 72 that will have their own in-health clinic. Is that right? Well, and, and we've gone a step further than any other county in the way we've set up this clinic as a completely independent uh, entity from the other health care uh, systems in town. You know, Fond du Lac County has a very nice clinic, but it's managed by the local Agnesian health care system. We think the way we're setting it up really has advantages that take our, our plan above and beyond really what any other county has done in the state. Outstanding, outstanding. So on behalf of Mike Vandersteen, Chairman of the County Board and our full County Board, thank you so much for joining us. Next month, our Airport Director, Chuck Mayer, is going to be here. We've got some real exciting things happening out at the airport as well, a major extension of a runway, certainly very important for economic development. And we hope to have Mike Collard back then the general once a year. Uh, we have 22 departments to go through, so it can take a while to get through all the departments, as you might imagine, but we'd like to have Mike in the... the um, nurse practitioner join mm -hmm. Mike perhaps within the next two to three months to give an update on how it's going. So until then, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.